how we look forward to these enemies of Jehovah, our enemies, vanishing like smoke. Fire would be a suitable means of eliminating such refuse. Now this point, what the fire did not consume, the maggots would. Now, I don't know if you know much about maggots, but uh, you see a whole bunch of them. It's just not a pleasant sight. But what a fitting picture of the final end of all of God's enemies. Sobering, yet something we look forward to. However, the apostates and the enemies of Jehovah would say, well, that's gruesome, that's despicable. You teach your people these things? No, God teaches his people these things. This is what he's foretelling. And frankly, for friends of Jehovah God, how reassuring that they're finally going to be gone. All these despicable enemies that have just reproached Jehovah's name, destroyed, never, ever to live again. Now, it's not that we rejoice in someone's death, but when it comes to God's enemies, finally, they're out of the way, especially these despicable apostates who at one point had dedicated their life to God and then they joined forces with Satan, the devil, the chief apostate of, of all time. So while we eagerly await Jehovah's bringing his enemies to the end, so what a clear warning. We don't want to have any friendship, whether socially or on social networks, uh, with Jehovah's enemies. We're not friends of the world. We're Jehovah's friends. Uh, we're uh, looking at him as our closest and most precious friend, and we never would want Jehovah to view us as an enemy. So, in conclusion, let's go back to that opening psalm that we looked at here. Just to help this verse stay in your mind, we hope, uh, verse 20, just to emphasize this, but the wicked will perish, the enemies of Jehovah will vanish like glorious pastures, particularly they will vanish like smoke. So this, I thought this would be a nice memory aid to this verse stay in the mind. Here's what Jehovah's promising. <laughs> now, just in case you couldn't tell who he was talking about every time he used the word despicable or enemies, he's referring to us, former witnesses, apostates, all throughout that lame boring monotone discourse was nothing but an incitement of separation violence by God against us admonishing his his followers not to talk to us stay away we've made friends with the devil now i'm sure this wasn't the only piece i'm sure i'm sure that court over in belgium used their uh their policies as the anchor for this decision to find them to the 12,000 uh, euros. But I'm almost certain this particular piece of audio and video made it as an exhibit. And sadly enough, there are tons, tons of videos, tons of audio of this kind against us. So now you can see, and let me, before I go there, did you hear him projecting, calling us despicable? When we aren't the ones who are doing the lying, we aren't the ones who are giving out generational encumbrances. We are the ones who are trying to alleviate the burden. We are the ones who are trying to help and heal, projecting. It is a beautiful thing to have the courts, the courts, global courts, not just the U.S. The U.S. will catch up soon, don't you worry. Belgium. Wherever else they're doing it, even Russia, they're banned in Russia. The globe, global court systems, plural, are giving us our due. To all of you, to all of us, feel proud. But this isn't a moment to stop or get lazy. Keep turning up because it is just beginning. We are just starting to see the dominoes fall. This actually means turn up even more put all of their videos out there all of their audio 
everything, all of their books. I know many of you still have um, their old books that, you know, that told people, hey, you know, you won't need to go to school. You won't need to get a job because the new system will be here. So don't even worry about it. You're wasting your time. It's time to bring all of that out into the open for everybody to see. And not that we aren't already doing it, but to have more people doing it is is the key to have all of us. I know some of you who who are listening right now have some of these books in your home. I can't stand to look at them. I can't be around them. I get triggered. <laughs> I get triggered. I can't do it, you know, so I salute y'all uh, who are able to do it. But for those of you who have some and you don't want to do a podcast, you don't want to do a YouTube channel, put it on your Instagram, put it on your Twitter, uh, Twitch and whatever they got out there. I can't keep up with them all. But put them on there. You don't have to do anything, but just put it out there. So now we have all of these different people, all of these different angles, all of these different vehicles showing the same verifiable thing. It is time to turn up the heat so that we can close the door on this heinous organization dishing out these generational encumbrances. And you know what? Let me make a distinction right here, another distinction between the governing body and us. The governing body for 150 years, or the Jehovah's Witness organization, has made promise after promise after statement after prediction after prediction, and not a single one of them have come to pass. And here we are, those of us who grew up in it and know the religion like the back of our hand, We have also made statement after statement and promise after promise and prediction after prediction, and they are coming to pass. Current Jehovah's Witnesses, how does that sit with you? Think about that real good. Think about it real good. Yeah, they're coming to pass. They are coming to pass. So think about that. As a matter of fact, I've never claimed to be Nostradamus. (laughs) Okay, but I'm going to read to you a post I put up maybe a week, maybe two weeks ago, okay? Talking about things coming to pass. Quote, Former Jehovah's Witnesses, I just realized after a lifetime of being told what to do by the governing body as children, stuff we hated, we the apostates are now forcing the governing body to do what they hate. Governing body, get your lying asses in there and sign up for the redress scheme. After that, we have more for you to do. And then after the redress scheme, we're going to make sure you get rid of shunning so people will stop committing suicide because of losing their family and friends. And I'm going to stop it right there. There's actually another couple of pages of more things that I was predicting. (laughs) But getting rid of the shunning. They are coming to pass. And what does your Bible say about prophets who make predictions that don't come to pass? You hear me? Basically, he ain't the one. And they say some more stuff in there. I'm just not going to say it over there, over there. But the prophets who make predictions that don't come to pass, he ain't the one. I just read you one prediction that has already come to pass as of today. This is the beginning of the end of the shunning program of the Jehovah's Witnesses. Only because, sadly, only because it is going to cost them. That is the only reason that they signed up or verbally committed a verbal letter of intent to sign up for the redress scheme is because it was going to cost them. But whatever the reason, you are going to do what we are predicting you're going to do. You know what? I changed my mind. I'm going to read the entire thing, okay? Picking up where I left off. And the quote, And then after that, we're going to make you get rid of the blood doctrine, some of which we have already done. We've already made you change this doctrine. Okay, it's asinine what you've changed it to, but it's just the beginning of what we are predicting you're going to do. Continuing on, we're going to make you change this doctrine so you can stop murdering people. That is what your blood doctrine is doing. You have blood on your hands. That's why I'm sorry, you guys, I'm I'm on my soapbox right now. But that's why this title is what it is. The wages of generational encumbrances. Can you imagine For those of you who are listening who've been through this, can you imagine having your people laying on the table and the doctor saying to you, what are you going to do? And you say, let them die over blood and your Bible. Do you hear me? You telling me that's not going to sit on your mind? That's not going to sit on your spirit? 
You really believe that? Or is that what you're just telling us? Let me tell you it does. Because they asked me to do it with my dad. And when it come time for, came time for me to say it, I said it in such a low, hushed tone that the doctor didn't even hear me. And he asked me again, and I couldn't say it again. My older sister had to do it because I couldn't do it. So don't tell me, don't tell me that you letting your people die on the table is something that you're going to do that won't be an encumbrance that not only you're going to have, but as I let you hear in past episodes, whatever whatever trauma you got, you're going to pass it right into the embryo. We've already scientifically proven this in previous episodes. Generational encumbrances, Jehovah's Witnesses. Let me finish read this post. Then after that, we're going to make you tell the few remaining believers what you did with those billions of dollars in donations and deeds they gave you. And finally, after that, we're going to force you to file for bankruptcy and shut down this spirit-breaking, mind-bending, soul-crushing, despicable religion. End quote. Now, if you want to compare my predictions to yours, the difference is huge. It's huge. And this is the difference. None of yours has ever happened. Everything I just mentioned to you from that post is happening right now as we speak. We are putting so much pressure, so much pressure. And now we have a friend in the courts, not just in the U.S., but now in Belgium. And it's happening all over. The domino is starting to fall. And I told you guys a year ago governing body you should fire your pr team you should fire them so i told you you should have just said sorry you should have just said sorry that's all people were asking you and you had to do it anyway join the redress scheme the first thing is acknowledge your joining is the acknowledgement your joining is the unofficial we're sorry even though we know you're not i told you this many other people have told you just say sorry dude you're that indignant you're that arrogant okay the wages of sin you getting ready to pay him because what you are doing is a sin. What you've been doing is a sin according to your Bible. We just call it wrong in the regular world. We just call it wrong. That ain't right. Why y'all doing that? But you want to learn a hard way? Rest assured, better than we could ever do it, all we got to do is bring light to us. But the court's going to teach you a lesson. You hear me? It ain't going to be no plan with them. Should have just listened and did what we said. Now it's going to be a slow excruciating demise for you guys just like our childhoods yeah all your governing body driven lies are coming to an end yes friends governing body driven lies and lastly for those of you those of us who have been affected by these generational curses because that is what they are i didn't you know, really believe in that stuff until I understood what it actually was. And it's really just a passing down of bad energy, negative energy, trauma, all that stuff. For those of us, those of you who have been affected by this, now that you know, now that you know, it's now your responsibility to go ahead and take out the trash. We know the ideology is garbage. We know the belief system is trash. We know it's useless. We know it has serves no purpose and has, offers nothing to the human spirit. It is now your responsibility to clean it up, however you see fit. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that I brought a new perspective to you today. And um, as usual, I hope you got something from it, and I hope it's something that you can pass along. Oh, and before I forget, um, I don't remember if I said anything in the beginning. If I did, I'll just repeat it. Um <laughs> I um I'm trying to vet an individual who is um a financial planner. And so I'm trying to get a handle on on who he is and and his products and what he does and get some understanding of it because like I've told you guys it's time for me to start giving you some things as I'm telling you to get out of there. I still have to give you some things and one of the the biggest things I think I regret is not being among other things is not being of sound mind financially in my early years because we weren't taught that. And so that is why I um, want to bring this guy on hopefully within the next couple of weeks. And it's interesting because I, I talked about maybe two, three weeks ago about one of the benefits of being a Lyft driver. So this is how I met him. And I'll let him tell you how that whole conversation started if I, if and when I can get him on. But um, I'm hoping he'll be a huge asset for those of you who are leaving who may not um have have had the financial aptitude or looking to get into it or or just figure out your financial situation. I'm hoping he can find some um some 